Hi everybody, welcome to the fundraising podcast video. We are here at the international conference on fundraising in Vancouver and our first guest is Karen Osborne. Thank you very much Karen for being our guest here and uh, maybe you could uh, introduce yourself um, for those who don't know you. Sure, so I'm Karen Osborne. I am president of the Osborne Group. We're a small uh, but mighty uh, consulting for firm uh, based in New York and uh, do a lot of international work as well and that's how I met you yeah. doing international work so I'm delighted to be here with you. Okay and um, we just had a three-hour workshop pre-conference workshop mm -hmm. with you um, on major gift fundraising and uh, I would like to point out three things. Uh, there are a lot of um, fundraisers that are still using the word cultivation or cultivation phase or what is your um, what do you think about it <laughs> so you heard me say yeah. wipe the word cultivation out of your vocabulary mm -hmm. you know I think that cultivation is is such a broad term and it covers so many sins you know what are you doing with that donor well I'm cultivating them well how come you're going to see them again well we're still in the cultivation stage and our software is even developed around that right it says there's a kind of the identification phase and qualification and then there's the cultivation phase and then we jump to pre-solicitation and solicitation but really all of the major gift work happens under that rubric of cultivation so we've got to make it really be about engagement and it has to be specific that what are you doing with this donor? I'm increasing their motivation by, I'm overcoming a potential obstacle by, I am deepening their engagement by, and, and every step should be strategic and measurable with built-in follow-up. And then we're really doing our jobs. And it doesn't mean that we're not developing warm and good relationships, because of course that's our job, but we're doing it purposefully and strategically and thoughtfully. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, second thing, um, stewardship. Ah, you know I love stewardship. Yes, I do know it, but uh, share your, uh, what you think about stewardship uh, with our guests. Yeah. Here. <laughs> well, you know, I think this is an area that we do the least well with as a sector, that we thank people, I hope, quickly within 24 to 48 hours, 72 on the outside, And then the next time they hear from us is when they want money, when we want money. Mm -hmm. Or we think our newsletter is stewardship. Or we think that inviting them to different little events is stewardship. Stewardship is telling me that my investment of time, talent, and treasure actually made a difference. Mm -hmm. It caused an impact to happen, an outcome to happen. And then connecting me with that impact and outcome, helping me meet the beneficiaries and hear the stories, um, having a program person, a faculty member, a physician, share with me the difference that I'm making in a real concrete and visceral way and an intellectual way too, right? Because some people want to know it kind of up here and some people need to know it here. And, and our stewardship has to be creative and we don't put the energy into it. We don't put the time into it. Do you know, well, does all of your listeners know, <laughs> um, all of their retention rates? Do you know if your retention rates are good? Because that's what stewardship has a direct impact on. Mm -hmm. Do you know whether or not your upgrade rates are good? Mm -hmm. Because that's what stewardship has a direct impact on. Yeah. Nothing, nothing raises more money other than asking, than good, creative, stewardship. meaningful, personal stewardship. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> And the uh, last thing, I guess, or I do know that um, a strong board is very important, but uh, what, what are the, the maybe three important uh, things um, to have a strong board or for the board development? Yes. So a lot of us think about board development uh, in the U.S. as, oh, I need, we need a new lawyer. We, we don't have any lawyers on our board, so we need a lawyer. Oh, we need somebody from this part of the state. Internationally, what I find is so many boards are just made up of good people that have no expectation of giving, of, you know, they're just, they're just there to be um, kind of governors. Okay. 
and the way we should be thinking about boards. Number one, they are our best ambassadors. They are the folks that are closest to us. And so I think we should be really thinking about recruiting board members and assessing board members in three categories. Okay. So the first category is to think about what are those competencies, qualities, behaviors that 100% of your board members should have. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that comes to mind is integrity. Yeah. Right? We don't actually screen for integrity. We just think everybody is and invite them on instead of actually thinking about how would I find that out? What is the screen that I should be using? Another one that I think is incredibly important is generosity. Okay. It doesn't matter if you're poor or, or middle class or rich. Generosity is something that every human being can have, mm -hmm. right? Being generous of my time, my talent, my treasure. We want generous people on our board. We want people who are passionate about your mission. Mm -hmm willing to make you number one, two, or three while they serve. And then we want, and people who really understand, and I say this is especially true for our international friends, mm -hmm. who really do understand the power of philanthropy. They've experienced it. We want people to come on mm -hmm. who can say to you, oh my goodness, John, I had this, this wonderful, wonderful uh, experience in investing in an organization. Mm -hmm. The second bucket is 40 to 70 percent, kind of the organization, the NGO decides what's the right percentage. But what are those competencies, behaviors that we need? So I had one CEO say, I want strategic thinkers. Mm -hmm. If everybody's tactical, it just drives me crazy. I need some, <laughs> right? I need some percentage that are strategic thinkers. Or um, rich, mm -hmm. don't we need some percentage that have money? Shouldn't we not discriminate against rich people? I have, I won't name this wonderful international organization, but they're activists mm -hmm. trying to save. Okay. <laughs> and so they only want activists on and they think rich people will somehow corrupt. Uh -huh. No, there were nice rich people and bad rich people. Let's just invite the nice ones, right? <laughs> right. So we into very important, 40 to seven, what are those qualities? Mm -hmm. Strategic thinking, having money, maybe they have a network. Yeah. And then the last bucket is when we only need one or two people that have that. So that's where it's maybe I need another woman or I need somebody from this region or I need somebody who works in this sector. Yeah. But they also have to have a lot of the very important and 100% of the must have. And if we change the way we do things, if we actually invite people on who are engaged, who are donors, mm -hmm who are generous, who meet our criteria, just think how hard they would work for you. Karen, thank you very much. Oh, my pleasure, <laughs> so nice to see you again. Thank you very much. And uh, you also have um, a website, theosbornegroup.com. I yes. just check it out uh, and you also have some videos on there. We have videos, we have free podcasts right. that you can download on a whole wide variety of of topics and uh, we have a newsletter and we'd love to hear from you. Okay, perfect. So check out, check out uh, theosbongroup.com and uh, again, thank you very much, thank Karen. Thank you so much for inviting me. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>